Julia's Eyesight Adventure. Hello. Well, this week I've been having a lot of fun reading up about tropias and phorias and watching videos made by optometrists on the internet. Um, and as I understand it, these are when your eyes don't align properly. Uh, tropia is when one eye is permanently not in line with the other one. So you can follow things and both eyes move, but only one eye is tracking properly and the other eye is kind of following it, but not not achieving the same fixation. It's, it's uh, not giving you true binocular vision. You're getting double vision or one eye has to suppress. Uh, phoria is when probably normally both eyes can um, point pretty well to the same target but when you're tired when you've done a lot of looking one of them begins to drift it loses its ability to point to fixate to the target and so you get a situation where you begin to see with only one eye so if you're reading in the evenings and you've got a phoria it may be that you're only using one eye and the other one has to be blurred and not function properly. It seems to me that palming would have a good effect on something like that. If that is the result of tiredness, tired eyes, then regular palming throughout the day ought to allow the, the brain to direct the eyes better, for the eyes to work better together. I have had the experience of sitting in the optometrist's office and they do this thing where they, you know, occlude your eyes alternately and you can actually feel one eye losing the target and then locating it again when the cover goes away and this is aphoria this is where even when one eye is covered and both eyes should be able to sustain that pointing to the target one of them loses it and so the covering makes this obvious so i think i've got this but i've never been it's never been suggested to me by any optometrist that there could be something to be done about it. Sadly, British optometrists don't, as a, as a general rule, go for things like therapies and exercises, things that would help people with difficulties to improve their eyesight without going as far as surgery. Now, I think surgery is a very drastic measure. And the number of times I've read of people who had surgery for squints and it hasn't worked. Well, that's the squint is the uh, the tropia in any case. It's, the phoria is probably just totally ignored. And yet I think the phoria probably is what leads to one eye becoming worse than the other. Because if, just think about it, if one eye is looking at the target and the other one can't quite look at it, what's the other eye going to do? What is the brain going to do with the information that is not quite accurate? You won't be able to focus properly. And I think this is probably the reason why my left eye became more short-sighted than my right because I have a phoria in my left eye. And what I want to do is to see if I can demonstrate this using the camcorder. So I've got my target stuck to the window frame at about a metre and a half, I'm guessing. I can see it with both eyes, although with the left eye it's more blurred than with the right. So I should be able to converge on it. So let's see what happens when I occlude each eye and turn. Hmm. Okay, so looking at those clips, it's quite hard to see any movement. I think I catch a glimpse of the left eye kind of slightly jerking inwards when I take the cover away. But then in the second clip, I also saw the right eye moving outwards. So I don't have the experience to interpret this. I haven't done much of this before, which is why I'm so interested to try it. But I do think that if I have 
historically had aphoria in my left eye and the left eye has turned out a little. This could explain why the left eye hasn't got as good focus as the right. It's, uh, it's more short-sighted. And it certainly could explain why I have trouble getting the left eye into focus when the right eye is in focus because, as I think I explained before, I can cover my right eye and I can get quite good focus with the left eye but when I try and do it simultaneously the right eye won't cooperate with the left eye somehow. They go. There's some kind of connection not there. But, as I also said, since I started practicing with the Lifesavers exercise I have felt that my eyes are working together a lot more and so I think that would be a really good thing for anybody to do who has aphoria, whether they feel they have one or they've been diagnosed with one. Can't do any harm. So my next thing I'm going to try is a bit more with the Brock string. And I'll tell you about that next time. Bye.